every five or six years there's an era there's a cycle and then there's new kind of scammy things that happen and uh, of course uh, jp morgan has been involved in innumerable number of dubious things and they've had to pay lots and lots of fines as a result of that you know the the excess here and the craziness i think hits a new all-time high Welcome back to Library of Wealth. Today we have Bitcoin maximalist Max Kaiser on the scams occurring in the crypto market and where the fall of banking will leave investors in 2023. Kaiser sees that altcoins are milking markets, then moving far afield to economies that haven't heard of what's been occurring in these sectors. Max has been sounding the alarm on the excess money printing and now how people are taking advantage of investors during the bear market. The Swiss central bank posting its biggest loss in its 116-year history was a major indicator that something is wrong after raising interest rates three times last year. This is just another example of how volatile currency is in each country and how similar this is to what happened in the US. Let's listen to Max Kaiser as he talks about the future success of Bitcoin, the crypto market, and how inflation is impacting the economy like never before. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. We've covered that on all our programs over the years of Switzerland becoming a giant hedge fund. Um, they've been, they were the first to kind of like print up Swiss francs and then start buying shares in various companies. And they amassed a huge position, for example, in Apple um, using printed money, which was kind of clever in a way when they were the first doing it. It was, they were the original coiners. They turned the Swiss franc into a coin. They were printing up these tokens and then buying real assets. That's kind of what, you know, Sam bankman fried did, right? He printed up FTT tokens and then he bought people's real assets or he exchanged them for real assets like Bitcoin. So they printed up money. They were buying shares and, and various companies, including Apple. Um, so they were the first to do this as a central bank. Right. Their biggest loss in its 116 year history, the loss equates to roughly 18 percent of Switzerland's projected gross domestic product. <laughs> Product of 744.5 billion Swiss francs. Its previous record loss was 23 billion francs in 2015. So 18% of projected GDP lost. It's an incredible story that we've been covering for years. They've been, they just print money. They've been buying stock. Uh, Apple stock is one of their biggest holdings. And it's like all these companies that go around buying back their own stock, right? They borrow money from the Fed and other central banks when it was near 0% and they buy back their own stock and they get a price move in their stock and the executive stock options go up. And then all these stock buyback programs are starting to fall apart as well. Uh, you know, IBM was one of the first to really kind of fall apart and show negative returns even after all the stock buybacks. But we're seeing that across the board because it doesn't, you know, you're not producing, you're not investing in growth of the company and uh, capital uh, CapEx, right? To make your franchise grow, you're just borrowing to buy back your own stock. And then eventually uh, the earnings are depleted and, and, the, and the stocks collapse. So, and we're seeing that now. Kaiser points out that El Salvador has not defaulted on debts or experienced chaos, like the collapsing banks in the US and Europe. Max believes banks are attempting to achieve interest rate neutrality without completely destroying the world economy. Kaiser suggests keeping all of your Bitcoin since they have value and can't be destroyed by money printers in the future. He gives warning to the coming financial and monetary collapse, the disintegration of the concept of truth and the emergence of a new era of money. He says that global central banks are raising interest rates for the first time, which leads to a rise in the value of the dollar with market chaos quickly to follow. Yeah, it was playing a bit of a three card Monty game with inflation. So inflation was being kind of hidden and we didn't talk about it, even though there was asset inflation and things in the economy were busting up in price, but we didn't call it really inflation. And the CPI was not moving uh, aggressively higher and there wasn't really any inflation. Even a, a year and a half ago, people were still talking about deflation. Like, how are we going to fight this deflation? You know, we're targeting 2% inflation. How are we going to get to 2% inflation? We need to print more money because they were simply reporting on those aspects of the economy that would reflect the need to print more money because all the people who held assets were benefiting by all the money printing. So it was, what's interesting is that the mass cooperation of financial media to kind of portray these uh, hoodwinks uh, you know, the, this kind of shambolic behavior as financial news. And I think that's 
one one thing that we've done a good job in is kind of like piercing that veil. The inflation is still moving higher, so that's still going to be a problem moving forward. There's still going to be all these bursts of inflation in various pieces of the economy. And uh, eventually, of course, there's someone's going to have to look over the the horizon to uh, at some moment there being a massive pivot. So there must be some kind of pivot coming where there will be QE, wherever, whatever we're up to, five or six, and the bond buying continues. What you th what, is that a fair thing or what do you think? Uh, no, I don't think there will be more QE. I don't think it's going to be called QE. It's going to be just reset. I think it's going to be, mm. uh, sorry, there's no longer a U.S. dollar. There's a CBDC. Right. So there won't be anything at all. Like the next thing is it's over. Forget mm. anything that happened uh, because of uh, Bitcoin, because of El Salvador, because of the uh, alternative available that all see that all individuals see and because of all the money printing and because of all the debt write-offs and all the student debt loans write-off and the and the healthcare loans write-off and the, all the debt and the bad debt and the credit and the unpayable credit and all that stuff and all the Thucydides trap and the Triffin dilemma, all these fourth turnings, all these cycles ending and all the disaster. They can't, like they can't, they know they can't. There probably is no putting Humpty Dumpty back together again with the QE program, right? So global reset, it seems like it's in in the works. CBDCs are obviously a mechanism for some kind of global reset. Uh, these international confabs like the World Economic Forum and other spots are organizations and meetings where those types of um, rollouts are organized. And um, I guess given the alacrity with which things are falling apart, this big reset, like definitely 2023. Wall Street and Silicon Valley are not doing what the early Bitcoin investors were doing in 2017. With three 80% collapses so far in Bitcoin, the next few months will determine how it will bounce back. In the meantime, some experts predict an $15,000 bottom price for Bitcoin soon, seeing a recent downturn since its $30,000 price point in June. If their forecast comes true, it would inflict further pain on Bitcoin and the broader cryptocurrency market which has seen around $500 billion wiped off its value in the past month. Most agree that Bitcoin will survive this cycle, but this is eerily similar to the dot-com bubble of the early 2000s. While most major cryptos are spending much of the day in the red, ongoing investor fears about inflation grows as central banks tighten monetary policy. Kaiser emphasizes the value of ideal collateral provided by Bitcoin. Mortgage rates, having doubled in recent months, is one of the biggest signs that a massive collapse is imminent. A similar situation occurred in 2008 when the housing market crashed due to large banks having too much leverage from bad loans. Now we're seeing that not only do we have another bubble in the housing market, but there are many bubbles growing simultaneously. Cryptocurrency has never been more volatile, and with the recent economic downturn, many are starting to doubt even the most trusted crypto assets. What do you think about Max Kaiser's prediction for Bitcoin? and the banking crisis we're seeing unfold. Comment down below. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content just like this. We'll see you in the next video.